All right, to start off, we're just gonna make two components. We're gonna make a wheel component. That's gonna be the center of the wheel that we rotate, and then the images rotate when you rotate the wheel. So just wheel.js, and then we'll make a card or an image component. That's gonna hold all of the images. You can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine card.js. No, nope, let's make it actually card.js. There we go. So the wheel's gonna be a, a class component. So RC, I think it is the shortcut. Yeah, perfect. We need a constructor, which we'll get to in a second. Render return div, perfect. The card's gonna be a functional component, so RFCE, perfect. And we're gonna need the props for later, so I'm just gonna add that right now, props. All right, let's get some styling on these guys. So for the wheel, we're just gonna center it in the, uh, the middle of the screen. So const styles is equal to, I'm just gonna say wheel, and we're gonna need a position of absolute. We're going to need a top of 50%. Same with the left, so left. Let's do a height of 300 pixels. And same for the width. And then still background color of red so we can see it. And we need to transform this to truly center it. So transform, translate, negative 50%, negative 50%. So position top left transform height width background color red. Let's apply that style to this div here. So style is equal to styles dot wheel. We'll save. We'll add it to the page to see if it works. So let's import it first so I can actually use it. So import wheel from components. Yep. Wheel perfect dot js. You don't need the js or the semicolon. I just like to do that. So wheel right there, self-closing, save. We go back to our page. That's the wheel. We're gonna place the images around the wheel. We rotate this div and then the images rotate around it. So let's style the card. Card will be much of the same. Just the width and heights are gonna be different. So say const styles is equal to card. And then we'll say position, actually I'm writing it twice. Let's just copy and paste. So copy all this, yank. Put it here, paste, absolute, top, perfect, transform, perfect, height. Let's do a height of 100. Let's do a width of double that, 200. And a background color of blue. Let's apply the style to the div. So styles equal to styles.card. Let's use one of the cards in the wheel. So import card from slash card.js semicolon. Let's place it down right here card, self-closing, save, we go back. So that's our card in the center. So how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna get images around a circle? Well, we're gonna use a bit of trigonometry. And so we're gonna be working in 45 degree or pi over four radians. The math of your JavaScript uses radians, so pi over four is equal to 45 degree increments. So we're gonna place an image here at zero degrees, and then an image here at 45 degrees, and an image here at 90 degrees, and then here, and then here, 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 and here. So how do we know the X's and Y's? How do we know where to put the images? This has an X and a Y. This also has an X and a Y value associated with it. And then this has an X and a Y, obviously. So how do we know how many units to move in the X direction like this, that's X, and in the Y direction like that to get to this point? Well, if we know the angle, and we do because we're working in 45 degree increments, so this is our theta. This is the sign here, theta for the angle. That's theta. So if you know theta and you use some trigonometric functions, specifically the sine and cosine, if you take the sine of theta, that will give you the y of this triangle. If you take the cosine of that exact same angle theta, it gives you the x of that triangle. So using these two functions here, we can calculate the x's and the y's. And if we know the x's and the y's, we know where to put the image. So let's go to code and do that. So let's handle that. I think the card is going to place itself, but it's going to get its instructions, the theta from the wheel. So our state, what do we need in our constructor's state? Let me remember. We need a radius. You'll see why in a second. We need a stack of cards or images, an array. And I think that's it for now. We need a reference to this div so we can rotate it later. So just do a ref equals. And we'll say ref id arrow function. We'll call it wheel is equal to that ref id. All right, so when the component mounts, we're gonna 
create some cards. We're gonna create one for now, and then we'll create a loop to create the other one. So component did mount. We're gonna create a card. In order to do that, we need the center of the wheel. So I'm just gonna say let center of wheel equal. Let's do an object. There's gonna be an X and there's gonna be a Y. So it's gonna be a float default string. So we need to parse it. And so this dot wheel dot style dot it's just gonna be the width. So the center of this wheel is just the half of the width and half of the height. And that'll give you this point right somewhere there. For the X, it's gonna be this dot wheel dot style dot width and divided by two. I parsed it properly, I did. Copy, paste, and for the height, it's gonna be the same thing, but height. All right, so at the center of the wheel, we have the theta we're going to use. We're just gonna hard code it for now. So let's say let new cards equal an array with just one object for now. Let's say card, we're gonna send it the theta. The theta is gonna be equal to zero for now. That's gonna be this card right here. We'll do this card first. So that's 0, 0.0. And what else do we need? We need the radius. That's just gonna be equal to this.state.radius, this.state.radius. And then we're going to need the center of the wheel. I'll just call it center. It's equal to center of wheel. All right, so let's use those props in the card. So when we load a card, we need to get the X's and Y's of that card. So let's create a function to do that for us. So there's a function get my chords. And you're gonna give me a theta so I can do those cosine and sine math thingies. And you're gonna give me a radius. And so let's just return an object, a new X and a new Y. So X is going to be, of course, math.cosine of that theta, and the Y is just gonna be the sine of that theta. So we have our new X's and our new Y's. That should be a Y. Let's use that here. So we need to add on to these styles. So we need to destructure this, like so, with a dot, 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 dot. And then we wanna put in some new lefts and some new uh, tops. So left is gonna be equal to some sort of pixel value. So, so we can do this properly pixels there we go and then we have the what was it left and top same thing some sort of pixel value all right so what are the pixel values well it's the center of the circle plus or minus depending on where the image is going plus some sort of other x and other y these guys these calculations right here so the new left is just going to be the props dot center dot i call it center center of wheel center so props dot center dot x plus the new x and we need to actually capture the new x say let new chords equal get my chords and we have to pass it a theta and a radius props dot theta and props dot radius props dot radius there we go so props dot center x plus the new chords x dot x and same thing for the top so props dot center dot y minus the new chords. Now, why is it minus? Well, it has nothing to do with the math. It has everything to do with how the HTML is set up. So on the canvas, the for your x-axis, the left is negative, the right is positive. It's kind of the opposite or counterintuitive for your, your, uh, your y-axis. The top is negative and the bottom is positive. So if you want to move up, we actually have to minus or subtract values. So props.center dot y minus new chords dot y. Let's save and let's use that card, see what happens. Cannot read property X of undefined. Why is that? We're using a card here without any sort of props being passed in. We want to delete this. We created a new cards array with an actual card with the theta, the radius, and the center. We want to set the state. So this dot set state of the cards to the new cards. And then we'll just use the new cards down here. So down here we can just say this.state.cards. Save, we go back. All right, so did it move at all? It did move, but all the math of your, this is what they call a unit circle. It's called a unit circle because the radius of your circle is always one unit. And so the radius, when you use the uh, cosine of let's say zero, what it's giving us for the X value is one. That one for a unit circle is the equivalent of one pixel on your screen. So it did shift over, it shifted over one pixel. It's so small you can't even see it. So that's why we need to modify the radius. So we're gonna say cosine 
of theta, which is equal to 1, times our special custom radius, and that should move the image out more. So let's create a, I don't know, what should you say, 150? Let's say a radius of 150, see what that looks like. Save, we go back, and it's not moving. And why isn't it not moving? That's because we're not using it in the calculations right here. So times radius, times radius. All right, save, go back. There we go. So it shifted over. Should we do a bit more? Let's try 250, see what that looks like. So two, save. All right, it's okay. It'll look better in a, in, a, in a bit. So we placed one card at the zero degree mark right here. Let's uh, create a loop and put cards on the uh, the 45, the 90, the, uh, what's 90 plus 45, 135, 180, 270, whatever, whatever, whatever. So let's create a loop. So component did mount, new cards, equal, not that, let's do a loop. So four let i is equal to zero. How many cards do we need to create? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So four i is equal to zero, i is less than eight. Let's do i plus plus. And we're just going to push in new cards. So let's say, let's do an empty array like this. Empty array. And we'll just do new cards dot push in that card. There we go. And we're just going to do a simple formula to calculate the theta. So it's going to be our math dot pi. Just this uh, thing right here, 45 degrees or pi over 4. So math dot pi divided by 4.0 is 45 degrees. And we're going to multiply that by the i. So the first card is going to be 45 degrees times 0, which is 0. And then the first, the second card is going to be 45 degrees times 1, which is 45. 45 degrees times 2, which is 90, so on and so forth. So that handles our theta. The radius stays still, and the center stays still. We push in all the cards from 0 to 8, which is 8 cards. And then we set the state, and we put all the cards down here. So let's save. Let's go back. And there we go. We have all the cards centered around the screen. Let's make it look a bit more presentable. Let's do this. Let's go into the wheel. What is the width and the height? 300. Let's do a border radius. So border radius of half of that, 150. 150 pixels. Same thing with the cards. Let's make the cards a square. So let's say 200 by 200. Yeah, sure. Let's do a border radius of 100 pixels. We save, we go back, and let's shrink the cards. Let's go 100 by 100. And that should be halved 50. All right, so we have the, all the cards situa situated, excuse me, around the, uh, the little wheel here. Let's uh, code up uh, an event listener so that when we scroll our mouse, the wheel rotates, and when the wheel rotates, the images rotate. How do we do that? We need an on wheel. So let's say on, let me just check the thing first though. Each child in a list, uh, yeah, of course. So in, we need to assign, you don't really need to do this, but I don't like that warning thing. So when we create a card, we need a unique uh, key in that card. So just put it here. Key is equal to, and I'm just gonna say, just do this, string literal. Um, let's say card underscore, and we'll do I like that. Does that get rid of the warning? Yes, it does. All right. So let's uh, get a on wheel listener going for the card. Excuse me, for the wheel. Let's just put it here. So on wheel, we're just going to call a function called handle scroll. And it's a class function, so this dot handle scroll, let's write that guy up. So let's say handle scroll, we're gonna need the event. Let me show you guys the event. So every time we scroll on the wheel, or any child of the wheel, so console log event, we're going to get something fired off. So it will not fire off here because there's no wheel here, it will fire off here. So I scroll down just a bit and we get this. This is what the, uh, the on wheel event listener is. We specifically want this um, this property right here, delta y. It's the speed at which we're scrolling down or scrolling up. So we want event.delta y. 
Let's print that out and see what that looks like. Console.log and we'll go event dot delta y. Save, go back, scroll down just a bit. So it's negative 1.250, 0, 1.25, all right, perfect. So let's uh, rotate the wheel. We're gonna have to do a this dot wheel dot style dot transform. You wanna add a rotate to it. So you wanna do something like this. So it's gonna be a rotate of some sort of calculations and this has degrees, so we need to do, I don't think we, we're gonna do a, we're gonna do some sort of conversion. We'll just keep it the way it is. Anyways, if we did it like this, we're overriding the original transform, which would get rid of this translate, which would offset the wheel. We want to keep the translate of negative 50-50, so we have to be mindful of keeping it here. So translate, and we're going to do, what is it, negative 50-50, negative 50%, negative 50%, there we go. And so how are we going to rotate this thing? Well, how about we just throw in the delta y and we'll see what we get. So event dot delta y. Save, we go back, we just get rid of the console, we scroll down a bit, and we're getting this shaking motion. What's going on? Why is it all loopy like this? Well, we need to keep track of where the wheel is. Currently, all we're saying is scroll, let's say, it's an arbitrary number, scroll 10 degrees to the left. So it scrolls 10 degrees to the left, but it forgets where it's scrolled to. We have to, we have to save that number somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new new uh, variable here called this dot theta she will do a temp theta temp theta is equal to 0, 0.0 and we're going to use it right here so every time we scroll that wheel we want this dot temp actually we'll here so this dot temp theta theta is equal see plus equal plus equal to the event dot delta y there we go. And then we'll just use this dot temp theta in here. This dot temp underscore theta. We save, we go back, I scroll down, and we get this. Now it's a bit too fast. Let's slow it down by just multiplying it by, I don't know. Let's try it by half. Let's see what that feels like. Scroll, still a bit too fast. Let's do 0 0.2. Scroll down, still a bit too fast. How about 0 0.07? There we go, that's a bit better. So I scroll fast, we scroll fast, I scroll slow, we scroll slow. Let's get rid of this uh, on the right side, that scrolling bar. Let's hide that. How do we do that? Where's my index.css? Right here. Overflow. Turn that to hidden. 5f5, perfect. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll up, scroll up. All right, so just a few things before we finish up. You may want, depending on how you're coding this into a an already existing React JS app, you may want to keep track of this uh, this temp theta within the state in case you have some other code that wants to influence the wheel, how it rotates without the user rotating it. So we're going to save that in the state like this. So we're going to say theta is equal to zero. And when we go here, after we we do our calculations, we want to do this dot set state of the theta to the temp theta that we're using. So just go this dot temp theta. Now this is not the best coding practice because every time we scroll it's going to be setting the state. We only want to set the state of the theta once the wheel has stopped scrolling. So how do we do that? We're just going to use a little uh, trick. So what we're going to say is up here we're just going to say this.anim id is equal to null. We'll go down here and we're going to set a timeout. So we'll do this. This.anim id is equal to set timeout. And we're going to set that time out to, I'll say, 1, 150. Let's try 150. And so after 150 milliseconds, then we'll set the state. What this does is, every time we hit the handle scroll, it creates a timeout. But every time we hit handle scroll, we need to clear a timeout. So clear the timeout of this.anim ID. So as long as this thing is scrolling, it's clearing out that, that timer and setting a new timer clearing out that timer and setting a new timer. On the last time we scroll, the last time the wheel scrolls, it'll clear the timer, set a timer, but there's no other handle scroll to clear that timer, so this guy will finally run once. So when we go into the code here, let me show you. Console.log of blah, 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 blah. We go save, we go back here, 
Control Shift J, spin the wheel, wheel stops, timer goes off. As long as that wheel keeps spinning, that timer will never go off because it's always canceling the timer. When the wheel stops, nothing to cancel the timer, the timer goes off. So that's how we can uh, prevent this dot set state from setting the state every single time, which is, could be like thousands of times in a second, every time the, uh, the user scrolls their, uh, their mouse. One last thing before we go, in React.js, I'm assuming you know how React.js works, um, every time a parent refreshes or re-renders, the children re-render. So every time, like depending on how you're coding this in an already existing React.js app, every time something else on the page that's a, a parent to this little uh, component re-renders, all of these guys will re-render, even though their information stays static. To avoid unnecessary re-renders and create more efficient code, we're just going to memoize this, uh, this component with a React. This should be react.memo. Memo. There we go. Let's wrap it in a memo. Just a higher order function that prevents, in most cases, React.js from re-rendering elements or components whose properties haven't changed. Anyways, just to create more efficient code, let me just clean this guy up and I'll show you guys the, uh, the end product. So I've just gone ahead and I've replaced all of those divs with a, well, I just replaced them. I inserted images. I'll show you the code in a second. Just a, a final product that looks like this. Images that rotate around a wheel, pretty simple. So in the code, what did I do? Well, I added a pick prop for our card. So we just, I use the pick sum dot photos. It's like a lorem ipsum, but for photos website, I put in a certain dimension here. I pass that to the card right here and the card has an image now in it. So it has a different style, which is just a width and a height of the same card. The border radius is the same card. The source is that lorem or the Pixum Photos website and just have an alt image here. Anyways, just a bit of code in the div to create a final project or carousel that looks like this. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give a like, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and I'll see you guys in the next one.